Welcome back, everybody, because this week we have a lot for you on Big Apple Hockey. I am, of course, and I have brand new graphics for this, so I have to show this off. I am, of course, your host, Mark Williams, and I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, long live the king, Mr. John Falkowski. Long live the king, number 30. The, we want to <laughs> the number retired, and uh, MSG. Give us our date so we can spend and give you our money. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that, John. It's like, shut up and let me give you my money. That's that's the yeah. one thing I want for all this. Try from Futurama meme. Yeah. Um, and, of course, a man who's had a long day between all the Islanders news and, as, as well, sending his daughter to kindergarten, Mr. Anthony LaRocco. Yeah, Big Lou finally showed his cards. Uh, it's a long time coming, but uh, you know, he it's everyone was bang on. Those guys weren't going anywhere and he had them locked up from the beginning. So it's it's nice to see uh those deals out in the open now. Well, first things first, uh thank you all for uh supporting us and as well as all the different videos that we got going on. We started Can I just the say what that I feel old. <laughs> well I feel old with knowing that L is going to kindergarten. I'll be having drinks with my nephew at the end of the year. So I can't wait for that one. <laughs> um, so yeah. Then, and then you feel old. Uh, anyway, of course, uh, thank you all for supporting us on YouTube. Uh, we're also on Spotify and iTunes. The what if series dropped this week. Uh, we'll have our second episode, hopefully coming on soon. Uh, Check me out, please. I'm always interested in what topics you might want to choose for our what ifs and our top 10 list, the worst breakups in NHL history. If you haven't watched that, check it out. All right, uh, we're also going to have guests uh, galore today, as you could all see. But we're going to start with um, the rivalry we didn't know we needed in the NHL. Guys. Fame is well deserved, Spanish. I don't think there's ever been a gladiator's match. One. Yes. It is uh, Sebastian Ajo getting offer sheeted by the Montreal Canadiens to a five year deal. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the hero reveal himself and tell us all your real name? You do have a name. My name is Gladiator. How dare you show your back to me? Slave! Will you remove your helmet and tell me your name? This offer sheet, a mess, great fodder, or both? Both. Um, <laughs> and total savagery from the Carolina Hurricanes. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. I mean, all this <laughs> over Jesperi <laughs> Kakniemi. So, I mean, I, it's it's just, it's hard to believe that all that is is even happening. Um, so again, uh, uh, two years ago, Montreal offer sheet Sebastian Ajo. So they grossly over, overpay an offer sheet, uh, Jesperi Kakaniemi. Uh, Phil, your thoughts on this? Frank Saravalli kind of said it best. It, 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 it's, it's fodder. It's a mess. And it, it, it's funny at the same time because the, just the savagery on Don, uh, Don Waddell's part in uh, Carolina. I mean, he turned around and gave a $20 signing bonus. If, if that's not a legendary troll job, I, I don't know what is. Um, and, and no DP, they should not be worried about what they did 24 years ago with Joe Sackick. They're, they're, they shouldn't be worried about that. Retribution would have already been had by now, but um, it, it's, it, I, I think that uh, this is this is a A plus level troll job, and this is absolutely retribution. It gives uh, Mark Bergevin something to think about because now, do you really want to turn around and give a player that's really scored at about like a thirty point pace so far in his career six point one million? I mean, even Carolina, they can turn around, not qualify Cockney Emmy, 
and then sign him for like four, four and a half million a year after that. And it, it ends up being an A plus move because you get a young player with a lot of potential for not a whole lot, considering the size of the offer sheet and the tiers. And then you really kind of stick it to somebody who I'm not going to lie though, but now going back and thinking about it, Montreal actually helped Carolina with that one because if Aho would have hit the market, he would have gotten more than nine million, and he didn't even get nine million. So I mean, I, I guess Carolina is really just doing oh. this out of what's that? No, I just realized I had the wrong ticker. So oh, okay, sorry. So yeah, so I, I mean, I guess, I guess Carolina is really just doing this to be petty because it, it, it helped. They, they kind of signed Aho for them to tell you the truth. So. Um, um, a plus troll job, and it gives us news, and it gives us something to laugh about. So, bravo, Anthony, going to you on this. Um, elite, elite level trolling by the Carolina Hurricane social media team. I mean, from from the the quote from Don Modell being pretty much the exact quote Mark Bergeron gave when he offshooted Aho his comments on it word for word. It was. Pretty much identical. Um, the Hurricanes tweeted it out in French as well. Uh, on their Twitter profile, had Carolina Hurricanes written in French. Um, you know, the tweet, we've offer sheeted Jesperi Kakaniemi, LOL, and just the, the $20 signing bonus. And then the six, he got $6.1 million, but then he got $15, he got $15 on top of that, which is Kakaniemi's number. Um, <laughs> it's just... It was just, again, elite-level trolling. However, though, when you really break it down and look at it on the hockey side of things, yes, Barry Cocky and is not worth $6.1 million. And sure, one of the criticisms of the offer sheet from the Canadians to Ajo was that if you're going to offer sheet it, make it worth to where the team really has to think about matching or not. That was a simple, easy decision to match. It wasn't an exorbitant amount of money. This this was. It was a high – it was a – a dollar amount that was way too high for the player at this current point in his career. Um, and also the hurricanes only have, I think four and a half million in cap space. So if the Canadians don't match, they're going to be over in the cap and they'll have to, you know, trade Jake Gardner, which is, you know, which isn't a huge loss, but they're going to have to probably move a player um, if they ultimately get cocky and Emmy. And so I, I don't, I don't necessarily think they needed to do it or it's a player they needed. I mean, it was reported after the option came out that the Hurricanes actually tried trading for him, but they didn't get anywhere. So I guess that's why they went the offer sheet route. But ultimately, I, I don't I don't think the move is going to pay off for the Hurricanes because, again, that means they have to qualify him at, for at least $6.1 million next season. So they put themselves in a little bit of a bind there, in my opinion. Yeah, sure, they could always walk away making him a free agent, but is that really a, a smart move to make being – that you're going to give up a first and a third round pick to get him. And then on the Canadian side of things, he's not worth the money, but you need help at center ice. So they're in a you know spot where they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. Um, it's seeming, though, from the rumors out there, it seems like they might not match and then take that first and a third and use those assets to get Christian Dvorak from Arizona. That's been the word out there. So, um, you know, Christian Dvorak, uh, he signed for, I think, like three or four more years. So, Maybe they view him bring more value to the club than Kakinami, but it still sucks for them. You know, Kakinami is what third third overall a few years ago. Um, mm-hmm. He was a so reach was, there. Yeah, yeah, he no, he definitely was. But to lose a guy that you drafted that high, you know, after only a couple of years, is tough. But um, so ultimately, wrap it up. You know, again, ultimate savagery and elite level trolling, um, hilarious. But I I don't know if it was necessarily the best move for the Hurricanes to make. I actually don't know if it's doing the Canadians a favor, though. Like, I mean, because first, one thing is, look at that cap number. Um, oh, hold on. Let me just hide the banner. There you go. There's that zero. Like, you're, they have no money under the cap. So how is it that they think they're going to be able to afford a uh, Cockney Emmy anyway? Well, um, whatever goes to long-term IR. Okay, well, there's there's one way, but I mean, the, he's more valuable to the Canes than he is to the to the to the Canes. Yeah, no, but, I agree. And of all things, and, and of all things, it's like I, I can't help but just just wonder. It's sort of like of all the teams that's that's screwing with them. It's my it's the the, the Hurricanes 
It's not the Bruins. It's not the Sabres. It's not something else. Like the Sabres doing this would have made more sense. They got to get to the cap floor. They need talent. Um, they're not going to have Jack Eichel at least uh, for a few months if for somehow he, he stays. More on Jack Eichel later. Um, and we made it 10 minutes into the broadcast without with, with saying Jack Eichel. So it's, um, I mean, this is just, it, it, it can't just be a troll job. There's got to be more to this. Do, do the Canes, does anybody, either one of you guys really believe the Canes think they're on to a $6 million center? No, uh, like that's one of the first things I said is that Kakaniemi is not worth that, and Anthony repeated that as well. But y- you, if you take a look at it, right now he's not worth six point one million dollars. Could he be worth six point one million dollars soon? Sure, but uh, honestly, I I think either way, unless he has a gigantic year this year, he's probably not getting that qualifier because that's what they would have to qualify that. So if he does in fact have that gigantic year, they then qualify him, and then you go from there, and then you know you have a core piece at that point. So it's kind of good in a way because they really, like Anthony said, they put Montreal in a position to think about it. Unlike when Montreal put the offer sheet out there for Aho, like I said, Montreal basically signed Aho for that year because there was nothing to think about with that mm-hmm. offer sheet. It was such a team friendly AAV for them, and I don't even know why Montreal even did that because now. Now they're in a predicament because of it. Now you saw the retaliation that for all these years, everybody talked about, oh, why aren't offer sheets prevalent in the NHL? Because of retaliation. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. No general manager will do that. Up oh, here you go. Here we are talking about it. So for everybody who said it wouldn't happen, now we're looking at it. And Kakaniemi is a good piece because while he's not there yet and it's an overpayment, he has the ability to be there sooner or sooner than later. And Carolina gets a piece for really nothing that fits exactly into their timeline. And the other, the, the other thing too, is though right now, you're very cocky and he's not like in a trade. He's not worth a first and a third round pick. And that's what the hurricanes would be given up. So, Again, you know, I don't. I don't think they needed Jesperi Kakinenemi on the roster. I mean, unless I guess the plan is to move Trocheck to the wing if they feel that he's best suited there, and Kakinenemi plays center. But um, I think Kakinenemi yeah, might play wing. Maybe I, I don't know, but I, again, I don't. I don't think he was a need. But apparently, they wanted him, being that they tried to trade for him before this. But um, you know, I, I think they, they probably would have truthfully been better served waiting to see if. Uh, you know, Suzuki reached RFA status next summer, but I guess they didn't want to bank on that happening. That would have been the real, real target if they wanted to get exact some revenge. Um, I believe the term is Pyrrhic victory, where you win a battle, but you really lost because you just like lost too many things. Canes are going to win this, and then they got to hope this guy produces next year and achieves a six point a six point one million dollar qualifying offer. Um because if he's not, you just gave up a first and a third for, for here pettiness. But but here here's something to think about. Carolina Hurricanes are are a legitimate contender and they're that close to being a, a cup threat. They need to, you know, make a couple more acquisitions now that they lost Dougie Hamilton. But they're not going to be getting those high-level picks like where Montreal got Jesperi Kakaniemi. So if you think about it, they just ended up getting a young talent that could end up being, like I said, a a higher-end core piece for their team for not a lot. So it's actually a pretty good move by Carolina despite it having some retaliatory nature. I mean... I, I, I don't know. I just I, I kind of look at this in a, in a hockey way and go, I don't know about that. And right now, if, if you want to put him as a center, he might be the fourth or fifth best center on that team because he's not better than Jordan Stahl. He's not better than Marty Nikash, and he's not better Nikesh than is a winger. Brown. Yeah. So, oh, did he get, no, he was a center last year, wasn't he? Nate, Nate just plays primarily at the wing. All right. Well, my mistake. All right. But like – uh. Like this comment said, line two, Cogniemi, uh, Trocek, and Nikesh. So, Natchez, sorry. We haven't listed at center, but uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen him play wing more than center. 
either way. But after all, what are your thoughts on the troll job by uh, the Carolina Hurricanes? Uh, did, did, would you pay $6.1 million for KK? Throw it all down in the comments below. And if you were Bergevin, would you actually match this offer considering that you badly need centers? If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.